Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to do this cute little sunflower. It's uh, kind of wildly not neat. And it's not intended to be neat. Now I'm just going to give you suggestions for colors, but you can use whatever colors you like. I always set my palette up the same way, so I always use the same colors. This time I have black and white on there. I have two piles of white. Because I may mix from one and then I want the other one to stay uh, pure. But as you can see, all the colors are running together, which will be okay. So I have three brushes. These are kind of small for me, but we'll work with them. So I also have a paper towel and a little water. Not much. So we always do the background first. So we're going to put this sunflower is going to be tall. So I'm going to use a little blue. That's the cerulean blue I'm going to use. And this one is going to be tall. And the reason you know it's going to be tall is because the cerulean blue is the color of the sky. Now, if you have a um, blow dryer, you can use your blow dryer to dry this off in between applications or you can also use um, a paper towel and you may want to know why I'm using so much water is because I want the background to be just that the background if you use too much color pigment the background will be just as vibrant as the foreground or the main focal point and we don't want them to fight so if you water down your background you won't have to worry about them fighting and of course i could use a smaller brush for this what you'd be able to see i could use a smaller brush and not run over the edges but i don't mind running over some edges it's okay to run over some edges. If you want your painting to be super neat, then you probably don't want to run over any edges. So it's more pigment, as you can see, it's more pigment up there than down here. And if you like, you can paint over the sides. So that will spread the paint around. I'm not going to worry about it drying. I'm going to lay it down to the side and let it do its thing. So to tone this cerulean blue down, you would add just a touch of your orange. Since blue is the opposite of orange, you would add just a touch of the orange in there. And sometimes it'll make it have that greenish color. And it looks sort of dirty after a while. But the color of the sky is not that brilliant cerulean blue. It has other hues in it. And to get that effect, we add just a touch of orange. Again, I want it kind of faded. Still kind of brilliant up in here. And you want to go over the edges here and there of your petals. Otherwise, you'll have what we call a halo effect around the edges, which most people will have if they're trying not to get any paint on those edges. So that's that for that. So that's that background color. I'm going to go in here with the next largest brush and I need a little green because I have foliage down here at the bottom. It's not much, just a little. And most things are not this pigment that we see coming straight out of the container. See that bright, like a bright green. 
So if I add red to it, it's going to turn it brown. So in there, I'm going to add just little tiny pieces. I'm so far away because I want you to be able to see what I'm mixing, which colors I'm grabbing. And you see the difference in the color? I turned it a darker green. Then I'm just going to come down this side and put that color there. When you look at anything, you never see one solid color. You know it's a solid color, but you don't see a solid color. You see a mixture, lights and darks. So now I can add just a touch of yellow, not even much here and there. Just a tippy tippy touch. And all that does is create a variation in color. I wipe my XX pigment off before I put it in the water. That way I don't have so much um, color in my water, but what can you say? The water's going to get dirty one way or the other. The center of this sunflower is going to be brown, and you're going to get your brown according to your complementary colors. You have blue and orange. We use that on the background. We have um, red and brown. We have that in this green down here, and we also have purple and yellow. Since the majority of this flower is going to be yellow, I'm going to use the purple and yellow to give me this brown pigment here. Now, for color harmony's sake, which I didn't talk to you about that, color harmony is um, when you have a nice play between all the colors on your canvas. And nothing is, no one color sticks out like a sore thumb. The way I prevent any color sticking out like a sore thumb and creating color harmony is I do a little cheat. You see this right here pigment is still kind of wet. I'm just going to take my brush in it and I'm going to put a little in here. And I'm going to put a little here and there. Let me lift this up so you can see it because that's what I'm doing. I'm not taking it off of here. I'm taking it off of here because it's the same color. You see that? It's not much in there. You see that, right? A little here and there. It's not much to do anything. You can see that, right? Why bother? Because it's going to create a little color harmony. And then I'm going to come here. Hopefully this is still wet. And get a little of this green. And put it in there. It doesn't have to go everywhere, but sometimes I get carried away and just put it everywhere. But I definitely want it here around where the petals are going to go down into the brown. And then I'm going to put a little in there. What will happen is, I want you to see how much it is. It's barely anything there. Barely anything there. But your eyes are going to pick that up. So it's going to be enough. I'm going to clean that off the brush. I don't want any extra, just that small amount. There's enough on there for your, your eyes to pick it up and it to create a harmony between all of the colors. So no one color sticks out like a sore thumb. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this middle section, which I don't have a purple. I do have a yellow. Purple is made with yellow. Excuse me. Purple is made with your red and your blue. A red is going to be a bully. I'm going to pull a little red out and put it here. I'm going to take a little of this darker blue and put it here, side by side. Then I'll mix the two right in here in the middle. And that should give me a purple. A little more blue than red. And it will give me on the blue-violet side more of a purple color. See that? 
So I'll get just a touch more because I don't need much more. That's what I needed right there. So the brush is full of paint. I don't need all of that. And I'll put that right there. I'm going to come and scoop a good amount of yellow. I need to make a brown. That's what I'm making now. The purple and the yellow. Scoop what you need out. If if I add everything straight in here, it'd be way too much. And it's more on the green side. As I'm mixing it, it's more on the green side. So I'm going to take a little red. And turn that green brown. See that? And sometimes it takes a little bit to turn because we're actually mixing the colors. But there you have it. I don't completely blend my colors. Because I want you to see some variance in the colors. Remember, nothing is a solid color. And then I'm going to come here and paint the side and as I'm pulling the color pushing the color off the brush you see there's some green in there some blue in there it's just going to add to it some of those things you can't get unless you mix up your own colors like that so that's there and if I need it to go a little darker I can always come back and make it a little darker but that I'm going to add a little of that underneath here so it'll look like the um, that's brown but it's on the green side and it's going to look as if this underneath here is having the shadow cast on it from the flower And that's how you want to do it. Nothing is covering up anything else. We're just adding to it. Ugh. Well, I'm good at the accidents now. And that's why I use a small amount of water. One thing about yellow, yellow is a goodly color and it seems somewhat transparent at times. So for this to make it more solid, we're going to come through and we're going to paint where we want yellow, we're going to paint white. And we're going to need to let this dry. It's just weird. Most of these, uh, most of the time when you paint using white and these yellows, it's opaque. Which means you can't see through it at all. But maybe it's the way they're making the paints now. when you use them they look so transparent and we're going down the length or over and down the length of the, each of these petals it shows up in the end a lot of people want to just scruff it all around no 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 just go down the petal I have to get the blow dryer. Yeah, just a regular old hair blow dryer. And you can speed up the drying process. Some of these I like them all the way dry and some I don't because um, 
if they're not all the way dry, they will help the blending process. I'm going to go on the side here. They'll help the process and make it look so much more natural. I didn't put any blue up there. Now, I haven't placed white on every inch of this canvas where the yellow is going to be. Just a good bit of it, but not everywhere. That way, some spots will still look translucent, and some won't. I'm going to go back in here with a little bit of water on my brush and see if I can... Mm, too dry. I was going to see if it was wet enough where I could steal a little of the paint for this corner. That's that we need that to dry. So while that's drying, I'm gonna come in here. And go down see that it's really bright I kind of like that and again I'm going down into the petals now some flower has a ton of petals they overlap each other they're they're not flat they're not one length so in painting if I take it a little longer than it is that it's drawn on it's okay your finished painting is not it's just that it's a finished painting um, I look at a painting like writing a book the first draft, second draft, third draft, even. You don't finish the painting when you start it. Most people have an idea in their mind what they want it to look like, especially if they use a reference photo. It's not going to look like that right away. You want to put several layers. I usually put three layers on every one of my paintings, at least three layers. And I don't mean three skimpy layers either. So in here, you can still see a lot of white. So no, I have to go back and cover that up. And I'm just going right down the petal. Down the petal, up the petal. And I do believe if you have a squiggly um, painting, painterly hand, that's even better. We don't see straight lines in nature. And we don't expect them in our paintings either. These um, these are really, um, you may call them messy petals. They're not straight. And if you look at a real sunflower, once the petals come out, when they first come out, they're nice. They're gorgeous always, but they come out with this nice shapely, shapely kind of petals. And then as the sunflower ages somewhat and starts developing the seeds within the middle, you'll see some of the petals of the flower itself curve. And so you'll get all these weird, jagged, wave, wavy looking petals that you don't often see from the very start. 
So now those are yellow and I have that. Um, we use purple as the complementary color. But I can also, because I have orange on here, I can also, I'm going to go to the smaller brush because I don't want that much in there. And on some of these, not towards the edge, but down in here where they're more compact and they may cast a shadow on each other, I may add a little orange in here. And the orange sticking out by itself like this will look kind of funky. Remember we added a little orange to the blue. So we're strategically placing it in here. And because the white is still quite wet, it's coming out like a peach color. And I'm trying to make sure I'm putting it where it would look like it's underneath, not on top of the petal itself. I may even be able to come with a little of this red itself and see what I can do. So I lay all my colors out because even though I have in mind to use a particular color, it may be better to use another color. And if I don't have it already laid out, I'll have to go get it. So I generally have the same color palette always, no matter what I'm painting. A few colors, um, I don't always use orange. I'll use different shades of red. Most of the time I'll have a light red, a really dark, rich red. Adding a little more. Wiping off the excess paint as I go. Mm, I can even take some of that brown. Remember, I've already used this color in here, so it's not going to stick out like a sore thumb. But these petals are all like a solid color, and we don't want them all a solid color. Remember, we have to vary the color. So even though I know it's that brownish green color, remember, we used it in the middle, and we used some on that petal, but it's giving off just what we need follow we just follow the um petal and if i need to i can just add a little water and wet this up a little bit no need to add extra paint we want thin amounts of the paint added in so watering it down gives us just the right amount of coverage the side add a little to the sides mm -hmm. we don't want to be stingy but it helps each of the petals stand out as you can see I'm swiping the color that doesn't belong and it's causing these other petals now you're you're able to see the definition of the petals just defining them. I 
which is fine. I really want to put some purple in there, too. Just some straight purple. See if we got any left over here. I know. Remember, this is not your normal. So I'm not covering up what's there, but in some places... If I think it's a little too much red or orange, I added some purple to it. Ooh, I'm loving this crazy look. So one thing you want to realize when you're painting, use um, most of what you see, use it as a reference. Don't use it as the normal construct. This is what you normally see. When we see oranges, they're normally orange, okay? But you don't have to paint the whole orange, one solid orange color. When you add all these other weird colors in here, even colors that don't belong, it makes it stand out. Now, you can see how it's starting to cause it to stand out. You see that? That's what you want. We still, where the white is in some areas, it still looks, um, it looks like a, um, what we call the halo effect. I'm going to see if I can zoom in. It's going to cause the palette of colors to be out of the way. But I want you to see this more so. I don't use that much water. Let's get that out the way. See, so now you can see it's starting to really show up a whole lot better. So let's add a little more in here. We just randomly add it. This is a, a hand that's not real steady. We don't want a steady hand when we're painting. Unless you're going for extreme details, then you use a smaller brush and a steady hand. I have found that it's uh, a little freer. If you're a little free with your hand movements, the paintings turn out so much better. You're not locked in tight. So I'm getting just a small amount of red. And I'm going to add some red in these spaces where the white is. Yep, I'm just going in. I don't want to cover up all the white. But where it looks like a halo around some of these um, petals, that's where I'm going. I don't want it to look like a halo. You know, like there's a gap between the background color and the petal because that's where I went in and put the white for the petal um and since I did that I'll take some out so now I'm gonna take that red off because I put extra red in there I want to go in and get some more of that purple the purple is automatically going to look good in here yes the purple is going to look good in here because it is the complementary color of yellow. And I'm putting it more so down here for definition. So that you can see where the petals came up and folded over. From that section there. I want you to be able to see some purples. Really see that that is purple. It makes it stand out so nicely. Mm -hmm. Look at that. That's how messy looking. You see how messy looking that is? Because when you come up and examine it, that's what most people do. They come up close and examine the painting. And they see all these weird strokes going everywhere. What in the world? And then when they go back, step back and view it from a distance, 
because that's what you normally do, view paintings from a distance. Then you see, wow, all of it blends together so good. So I'm going to, I had cleaned the brush off. I'm going to get a little more of that purple. And I want to put some under the tips of the petals. If you can see that, I'm just taking them under the tips of the petals. The reason I'm doing that is because the background is so light. It's really thin because I watered it down. I'm steadying, steadying my hand just a bit. It's still sloppy. Purple is the complementary color of yellow, so it's going to go, period. Trust that. 